did you have? Um, so basically a few weeks back, as you remember, I did a video about um, the EU referendum, which was completely taken out of context. My entire rhetoric, really, for the video was to try and get people to vote, whichever way they intended to vote, just to get people to vote, because I've always been a stern believer that if you have the right to vote, you should vote. You know, people fought and died for their right to vote, and I really, really think it's the most important thing in the world. It, it always comes down to the fact that you can't have a say in your own future if you don't go out there and vote. It is so vitally important. That message seemed to have been lost on a handful of people, should I say. Um, it's actually quite funny, and you can obviously go back and look at some of the comments underneath my video. Thank you to my fiance for also pointing out that it was just a video about getting people to vote. It's really, really funny how people obviously don't watch things, um, just things they don't read. And um, yeah, so anyway, um, I'm not going to go into the sort of ins and outs of the EU referendum, as you may be or may not be aware, although if you're not aware, you've probably been living under a rock. We had the EU referendum this week, and um, the UK, I woke up on Friday morning absolutely shocked to find that we voted to leave the EU, which is something I still can't get my head around. This is not something that I voted for, personally. I, like a lot of other young people my age and actually younger than me, uh, voted to stay in. I wasn't even thinking about myself. Now, the thing is, I've already got home, I've got a job, which touch wood I'm going to be able to keep and obviously, you know very happy if I could. Um, so it's not even necessarily so much about my future, it's more about, you know, I'm getting married, I'd like to have kids in the next few years and I'd like to see a good future for them. But I know a lot of people through various sort of cosplay and music scenes and things like that who are a little bit younger than me, they're 16, 17 years old, and I know that they've expressed a lot of fear about leaving the EU. Now the thing is, they weren't given a, a vote in the referendum at all, which I think is a bit short-sighted. Uh, about a year beforehand, Scotland had a referendum to you know, see if they wanted to go independent from the rest of the UK. And they actually gave the vote to um, 16 to 17-year-olds. This is such a huge thing, uh, whether or not to stay in the EU, that I really think that young people should have been able to do it. And I've seen a lot of nasty things saying that young people don't really know what's best for them. Well, actually, I think they do. I think at that age they do have a valid opinion and they are very political. And I think I've seen a lot of that over the last couple of years. I really believe that young people should have been given a voice in this. It's their futures and I really believe that they should have been given a say. You know, some of them may have wanted to vote out, but they still didn't get the opportunity to do that. And I think that was quite wrong when you've had the Scottish referendum when they could vote. And than this and they can't, it just, that made me quite uncomfortable for a start. Um, I mean obviously I'm not overly happy with the result, um, very tempted to go to a march that's being organised in London on the 9th of July, uh, but aside from that, um, I just, I mean, it's just so hard to get get my head around at the moment. It's been two days. The only other thing that's really, really, something I've really, really noticed is, um, and I was talking to some colleagues at work about this during the week and the build up to the um, to the vote. So we hadn't even gone to the polls yet, but we we're already starting to notice some nastiness around, not just online but in the street and things like that. It was starting to get a little bit uncomfortable. I think something's been unleashed by this whole discussion that really. I think we just about had a lid on it. And I've noticed it in the last couple of days actually getting a lot worse. There's been a lot of xenophobia, um, a lot of racist abuse to people online and all sorts of stuff. There's been lots of comments like towards people, like one Polish person and I said that they've been told several times in the last couple of days to go home, like we voted you out. Which is heartbreaking actually that's not something that anyone wants to hear going on it's not even the way the whole system works and i think a lot of people who voted leave are going to be surprised at just how long this whole process takes the next step is um to enact something called article 50 which is basically pressing the big red button that says we're coming out now david cameron is leaving power in october 
and he basically will not press that button, that big red button. Um, it's likely Boris Johnson will take his place, although, let's face it, we, we don't really know that for sure. But whoever takes his place is probably going to be unlikely to want to do it as well. It's a bit of a poison chalice to be sort of handed this responsibility, this thing to do. So I guess we're going to have to wait and see what happens with that. But it's going to be a lot more of a slow process than people think. And the thing that worries me is that I think a lot of the reaction, a lot of this xenophobia and stuff like that that we've seen over the last couple of days is probably as a reaction to the result. I'm, I'm hoping that there will be a lot more calm, that people will start to take a step back and will realise that what they're saying and what they're doing is wrong um, and that they will actually just chill out a bit, really. I think everybody needs to chill out quite a bit at the moment. Um, and I think, really, we should take a lesson from something that happened at Pride this weekend. I mean, it's been such a contrasting weekend. You've had all that xenophobia and stuff, and then you've had Pride, which is the biggest love-in I can possibly imagine. And it has been absolutely wonderful to see all of the happy, brilliant, wonderful LGBT people out there celebrating who they are, and you know, people, all their straight friends there celebrating with them. And it's just this wonderful sense of unity and love that I've just been getting from these pictures and bits of film online. And one of my favourite things from the weekend has been the Met Police officer who, mid-parade, stops and proposes to his partner. And I'm so happy that his partner said yes. He, he said yes. And that was one of the most beautiful images of the weekend and something we should really take really take pride in. It was absolutely beautiful. Now that's the sort of thing we need more of in the world. We need more love, we need more acceptance. We don't need all of this horror that seems to be behind recent events. I, the world's been a nasty enough place recently as it is. I mean, we've had horrible things happening with the Orlando shootings and we need some joy in life and seeing things like that really bring joy to life. So we really need to stop with the xenophobia and things like that. You know, whatever you think of the outcome, if you're happy with it, fantastic. If you're not, I'm sorry, I sympathise with you. But we've got to stop being so horrible to one another. That's not the point of this. It's taking it too far. You can't just go up to someone in the street and tell them to get out. That's unbelievable. This is the sort of behaviour that started in Europe sort of 70 or 80 years ago. This isn't, this isn't the way we're supposed to behave in 2016. So like I say, I'm really hoping over the next few days everything kind of settles down, people find some sense, and that the nastiness goes away. Because this isn't exactly what I want to see for the future of Britain. Whether we're in or out, I don't want that. And I think a lot of people would agree with me. And I'm preparing myself for an onslaught in the comments again because people won't watch this video properly and they won't take the message on board. And the trouble is I'm posting it at a time when people are still being reactionary. So feel free to have a rant in the comments if you like. I can't promise you now. In fact, I'm telling you now, I'm not going to be responding to any comments. If there's anything particularly racist, I will be keeping my eye on it. I will be reporting comments that are particularly abusive. I really think that the message you need to take from this video is to be nice. Just be nice. We don't need that hatred. Just be nice. And I'll see you in the next video on that. See you later.